uh, Pastor Kirk from St. Matthew Lutheran Church. Uh, thank you for joining us for our midweek service during Lent. Uh, we will be uh, considering the faith of Abraham this evening, and uh, that that will be our theme. Uh, I'll do. I have the only script here. You don't. So uh, I'm just going to read everything. I have a couple of assistants here. So uh, we can we begin. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you, the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Amen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. He remembers his covenant forever. The word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. Our read for this evening is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the, the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught in the thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offering, or your offspring, excuse me, your offspring as the stars of heaven 
and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will listen to hymn number 547, The Lamb. gospel reading for this evening is from John the 8th chapter, beginning with verse 48. The Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. But you have not known Him. I know Him. If I were to say that I do not know Him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. 
So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. If you, O Lord, or in you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Lead me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies, and protect me from those who rise against me. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I repeat our reading for this evening from Hebrews 11, verses 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Let's take another look at Abraham's faith but this time with a focus on the latter part of his life. Last Wednesday, we made the point of saying that Abraham never saw the things he was promised. He was promised three things. He was promised land, children as numerous as the stars in the sky, and a savior who was to come from his children's children. He never received any of those things, but at least Abraham did receive a portion of that promise. Consider it maybe as a down payment, an engagement ring, a promise of a promise yet fulfilled. N not land. He even had to buy or to purchase land to bury his own wife. Not children as numerous as the sands of the seashore. And certainly no savior to come from his generations. But he does have a part. He has a son, an only son, named Isaac, whom he loved. The name Isaac means laughter, because both Abraham and Sarah laughed at God's promise. They were old. They shouldn't be able to have children. And yet, God was promising that from their own bodies would come up a son. And when they heard that, they laughed. This was God's way of getting the last laugh. But it is important to, for you to remember the name Isaac because God's promise to Abraham specifies his name directly. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 17. God said, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. Genesis 17, 19. Okay, so at least it's a start, a late start, a small beginning, but it is a step in the direction of the promise. Isaac is a joy to his parents because he connects them to the promise. There is so much riding on him. Then God tested Abraham's faith. This would be no laughing matter. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Abraham does exactly what he's told. He acts not only according to the commandment of God, but according to the promise.
For God said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. These two things work in tension in Abraham's life for the next few days. He has a clear commandment from God. He also has a clear promise. The former will stay in the forefront of the story. In fact, our story begins and ends with the commandment of God. It brings with, with it the words, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and offer him as a burnt sacrifice. And the story ends with the angel of the Lord recognizing the obedience of Abraham to the commandment. Because you have done this, I will certainly bless you. So think of the commandment and Abraham's obedience to the commandment as the book, as book ends to the story. Everything else between these two things is a narrative. And many people recognize that Abraham's obedience to the Lord is commendable. He celebrated as, true man, as a true man of God because he does what God commands. But the other thing that's working its way through the story is the promise of God. And the promise was there long before the story ever began. To use another metaphor, we might think of the story as a sandwich. The two references to the commandments of God are the bread on each side. But the meat, the summer sausage, is the promise. Thus, what the writer to the Hebrews tells us to imitate is the faith of Abraham in the promise. And here's the promise God said. Through Isaac, your offspring, will be named. Anyone who has read the book of Genesis has always tried to rush to this story of Abraham and Isaac. But there is a story right before this that many skip over. It is the story of Hagar and Ishmael. This story uh, sorts out uh, who is the heir of the promise. Isaac is specifically named. He is singularly mentioned as the one who comes from Abraham and Sarah, from their bodies. And he is the one who will fill what, fulfill what God had said. You remember that Abraham and Sarah thought they had to, had to help God out with fulfilling his promise of a son. And Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham and he fathered a son through her. But this was not necessary. And it's on Abraham's heart and mind as he enters the land of Moriah with his son. He believes that Isaac will survive this ordeal, whatever happens, because God has promised to fulfill his promise through Isaac by name. And it is this faith in the promise that propels Abraham onward and up the mountain to make a sacrifice to the Lord. In the meat of the story, two strong statements of faith are made. The first one is in verse 5. Abraham says to his servants, Stay here with the donkey, and the boy and I will go over there and worship and come again to you. Abraham is confident that they will both return the second statement of faith is in verse 8. The context is a haunting question of I the haunting question of Isaac as they make their way up the mountain. My father, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb of the burnt sacrifice? And the father answers in faith, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. Abraham acts in obedience of faith. But it is his faith that lifts his spirit. In his faith, it is his faith that animates his steps onward and up the mountain. The commandment is hard and cruel. The test is terrible. Take your son, your only son, whom you love, and offer him up as a sacrifice to me. God had promised, and God cannot lie. 
God will not deceive me, Abraham might have said. And Abraham goes up the mount confident that God will keep his word. You realize, realize, of course, that this story has a significant, another significant meaning. It isn't just a story about Abraham who acts in faith according to the promise of God, but it is also pointing us to the fulfillment of that promise in Christ Jesus. This is the example of faith to be followed. But the, of the followers of Christ, the story has another meaning. The land of Moriah is none other than the place of Golgotha. The geography is the same as Jerusalem and Calvary, where Jesus would suffer and die for our sins. And he carried the wood of the cross up the mountain as well. Just look it up on a map. The language is also the same. Take your son, your only son, whom you love. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16, you know that. And then there is this word from John the Baptist. He sees Jesus coming toward him, and he says to his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1.29 God himself would provide the Lamb. Abraham was right. To, in more ways than one. The ram caught in the thicket, the male lamb that would be the substitute for Abraham's only son, is pointing us to Jesus, who would take the place of all sinners to be slain on the cross for us. Is this just the fancy of Christianity? Judaism would say this is all just but Jesus himself, or saw himself in the same story. In his testing argument with the Jews, with ridicule and scorn being landed by both Jesus and the religious leaders of Israel, Jesus says an amazing thing. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Abraham saw the day of the Messiah on the mountain in, land, in the land of Moriah. He saw a ram caught in the thicket. He saw a substitutionary sacrifice that took the place of his own son, his only son that he loved. He saw Jesus as the angel of the Lord who repeated him the most important part of the promise. In your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. Most people read the story of Abraham and hear this story about faith. We read the story of Abraham and also hear a story about Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But Abraham had no understanding of these things. He, he may have seen the future of the day, but he was far more concerned with the present. It was his only son being laid on the altar that day. And the knife was raised. And only at the last did the angel of the Lord stay his hand. Once again, Abraham had two things on his mind. The dreadful commandment of God and the promise. The dreadful commandment was to offer up his only son. The wonderful promise was that through this son, and not just any son, not Ishmael, but through his son Isaac, God would fulfill his promise. And Abraham's faith runs with the promise. Abraham acts according to the contours of the commandment. He goes through the motions that have been outlined by God's clear voice to him. But his heart is trusting on the promise. He believes that God will fulfill his promise to him through Isaac. As the writer to the Hebrews re records, he considered that God was able to able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Commandment and promise, law and gospel, they always live in tension in the life of the Christian. We hear the commandment of God and we act accordingly. We seek to live a holy life, 
But we always live our lives in the promise of the forgiveness of our sins. For we too see the contradiction. We cannot live according to the law of God. We cannot comply with the righteous requirements of God. Not because we are unwilling, but as Paul says, we are unable. We are sinners by birth. We are sinners in our daily lives. And the knowledge of this moral failure terrorizes us in our life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, yet we believe the promise. The gift of God is eternal life. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. We trust that God still receives us as His beloved children, washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, because of the forgiveness of our sins. And in this God, and it, it, excuse me, and it is this gospel that motivates us to live according to the commandments of God. You can never separate the commandment from the promise. If we were to only hear the law or only the gospel, we would lose something in our spiritual lives. But like Abraham, we live with them both at the very same time and always rely on the promise to sustain us. And such faith is commended by God. Such faith is counted as righteousness. Listen to this carefully. Abraham is counted righteous, not because he obeyed the call of God. Abraham is counted righteous because he believed the promise of God. And it is the promise that sustained him in his difficult task. Abraham is commended for his faith, and we are called to imitate his faith. Therefore, may the promise of God sustain you. We are looking forward to the city that has solid foundations, whose designer and builder is God. We are looking forward to the day when God will keep all his promises to us, promises of life everlasting, of a new heaven and a new earth. For God can and will not lie to us. He will not deceive us, but he will keep his word according to his grace. Your sins are all forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with uh, the hymn, My Faith Looks Up to, to Thee, number 702 in the Lutheran Service Book.
848 through 59. Excuse me. Uh, we continue with the Magnificat. Let my prayer rise as incense before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in the remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now is the time in our service when we would bring our offerings, uh, and so I encourage you to remember your congregation uh, with your offerings. Uh, we are still working and bringing God's Word to you, so again, please give generously uh, in this time of low attendance. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For our closing, would you please turn to Psalm 91, uh, either in your service book or if you have your scriptures uh, available. This will be in the ESD uh, version. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will I say to the Lord, Lord my refuge and my fortress, fortress my, my God in whom I trust. trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come ne near you. You, you will look, look with, with your, your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. We close with all praise to thee, my God, this night. Um, Luther service book, hymn number 883. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, be aware that we are also broadcasting our service on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, it comes out on our local radio station, but also you'll find it on our Facebook page. God bless you. Take heart. Your Lord never sleeps. Amen.